Alright guys, so we are underneath the truck and we are looking at the Eaton 2 speed uh, spicer right now. And I'm still trying to diagnose uh, why my 2 speed's not working. I hooked it up and it shorted out. So I'm either diagnosing it's something in this motor or it's something there's uh, a broken wire somewhere along the way it runs down the frame. So that's what I did. <clears throat> this is just a simple 12 volt system. So I took this lawnmower battery and I hooked it up to jumper cables. And I grounded it to the frame up here. And now, all I gotta do is these are the two wires that come off the spicer. And you can hear it as it switches. So, something is happening in there. You might be able to get you closer, you might be able to hear even better yet. But... So it's still doing something here. And the other thing that people said with these that was common would be the limit switch would go out and it would cause problems. But what that does is once the spicer is moved all the way one way or the other, it stops. So there you can see it stopped. If I touch it again, nothing happens. So if I go to this side, now that it moved all the way, if I touch it again, nothing happens. So I think what I'm going to do is I got a red and a black wire here. Um, the red's for the high and the black is for the low speed. So I'm going to try to manually run it over into the high speed. And I'm going to try and drive it once and see if my gears feel like they're changed or not. Because I'm not sure if I have to have constant power to that or not. But we'll give her a shot. He's turning over slow today. <clears throat> she starts hard holding in. All right, we'll let her warm up, and then we'll see. We should know right away if the gears are changed or not. All right, guys, I'm under here, and uh, I took it for a quick drive, and it still didn't work, so I'm going to pull this plug once. Boy, so it's got, it's got fluid in it, that's for sure. That was one thing that worried me a little bit. And then I'm going to pull these six bolts, and then, you know Thick. I'm gonna pull these six bolts and then we're gonna see what's behind it once. Alright guys, I figured it'd just be easiest to take that whole two-speed gearbox off. So I did, and that's this right here. And you know what? I'm just gonna go through and clean this whole damn thing up and go through it. So it's pretty simple. Now that I I'll have to tighten some bolts to be able to test this, but I'll test this and I'll show you guys how it works because all it is is this pin here sits right up in that fork and then there's a worm gear that goes up and down here and that pin moves and it's supposed to shift that but I don't know it's not working very good so we'll see all right guys so I got it hooked up so you can see what's happening so you can see that shift fork and all I got to do just put power to one side or the other and that will switch which direction this goes. So, you can see it went one way. Now, if I try to touch power again, it will no longer move because that limit switch is working. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And I go the other way, and that's the, it's the same thing. Limit switch is working just like it's supposed to. So that goes back and forth just fine. 
just like it's supposed to. So what I'm gonna do is I got it off is I'm just gonna clean it up really good because it's really, really grubby. So I'm just gonna pressure wash it and then I'm gonna re, or re put oil on it and uh, then we're gonna hook it back up there and then we're gonna start somewhere else. Now we have the whole unit, unit here, and I cleaned it up fairly good. So now what I'm going to do is pull this cover back off, and I will. Um, I'm going to clean, break clean all that, or carb clean it, just so that I know there's no gunk build up in there. I'm going to look everything over. That way I can be extra sure. And so you can see how grubby that is. So I'm gonna <clears throat> break clean that off. And then this stuff here, this is pretty simple. So I just want to make sure this is all good yet. Which that spring's not broken. I wanted to check that. This pin's on here, that's tight. This is here, that's tight. So that I shouldn't have to worry about. And that's really all the system is. And then this, those two claws, they clip on the here. And then all they do is uh, go up and down with this worm drive. And then that just spins that whole deal in there. Moves that shift fork, so. Looking a little better. Alright guys, so I just ran new wires and then I just ran them exactly like the old ones. So I went I picked up 10 gauge wire, which is what this was wired out of before. I'm hoping I don't know, I had a short before it, it melted all my wires, but I didn't use quite as large of wires. 
I think I use like 14 gauge or 17 gauge, 18 gauge, something like that. So um, this is what it had was 10 gauge. So I'm gonna do exactly how it was. And those are wired on here. So now I just gotta mark mark my tail wires. And then this is where the, the end of these wires is where there's a connector underneath the truck. So I'm gonna do that same thing in case I ever gotta work on them that I can disconnect them right there. And then a really good practice when you're wiring stuff like this and one's a high, one's a low, you don't want to interchange them. When you wire them, um, wire the ends odd. You know, like this one's a female and this is a male. So when I run my other wires along my frame, I can't accidentally reverse these because on the other end, you know, they won't fit. So that's a good way to keep from mistakenly hooking up the wrong stuff if you're ever working on the stuff again. All right, guys, so I just put some uh, red high temp gasket maker on here. This doesn't get very hot, but I figured that'll do the trick. So now I'm going to press the casing of the spicer on and then loosely tighten it because you don't want to squeeze all the gasket maker out. You want it to set up a little bit before you squeeze it tight. All right, guys, so I got that all mounted up. And yeah, I just, uh, I tighten them loosely. You can see it squeezed some of that out, but you don't want to squeeze it all out. So see it's getting in there good. So that'll be fine. So what I'm going to do is just give that like, I don't know, it's going to take probably 15, 20 minutes. Um, so let's let it dry for an hour. All right guys, I just ran these wires. There's two of them here. They run the length of the dump truck. They hook up to those two connectors off the motor and they will run right up to the firewall. And then I got two 12 foot packs of 7 16 wiring loom. And I'm gonna wrap these whole wires in wiring loom. And they were not, and they're, originally they're not wrapped. So I'm gonna do this because well one, I've got like, a lifetime supply of this stuff. Uh, my brother, Reckless Offsets, I'll put his channel name in the description. He does YouTube too. And he bought like a, a pallet full of this stuff. It's got like 355 gallon uh, blue barrels and like a bunch of cardboard boxes full of this stuff. So I'm just gonna not shy on that. And that way that keeps any of this from getting rubbed through. And I didn't mark which ones were which and they got all twisted up on the loom. So I'll show you an easy way to test that. So I put one wire to the positive on this battery, that jumper cable is just to hold the wire tight. Then I put my test light to the negative. So all I gotta do is touch my wire to my test light. See, there it just came on. So this doesn't, so it only works with the one. So that tells me that this wire right here is the same as that wire on that lead. So I'm gonna mark them, that way I know exactly which ones are which. Alright, now we're left with just this, which reaches perfectly to the firewall, so perfect. Put the guts back in, and uh, I lined up this piece in the back there good, and then got this one hooked up where it's got to be. So now I will RTV around here, and I lightly put that plate on, and then um, just kind of finger tight again. And that way that gasket can set up a little bit. Then I'll crank her down, I'll be able to fill her up with oil. Just got the face plate back on. And you can see I got just a little bit of gasket maker hanging out on the sides, which means that it's good and sealed. Now I'm gonna let that sit for an hour. Now I'm going to work on more of these wires and I will get back with you. Hey guys, Tanner here again. I'm gonna pick up where I left off on the Eaton 2 speed. Uh, my camera ended up dying yesterday and I was not able to film at all. But I got all the wires run, so now we gotta put fluid in and make sure it works. So I wrote up a little diagram. For any, but there's not a lot online about wiring these things. You can find the actual diagram, but there's nothing showing you how it's done. So I'm gonna use this as kind of an informational video for anybody who's having trouble with their two speed. 
But I wrote up a little diagram that simplifies exactly how easy it is to wire one of these in. And I'm gonna show you that quick, and then we're gonna go look at the truck again so you can see just how it is. So I wrote up this little diagram, and I will link the actual um, full diagram that I found online in the description. But this is actually a really simple setup. So this here is a two-speed motor. This is what we took off the rear end yesterday and was working on. So you got a high and a low wire that run off of that two-speed motor. So that high wire goes straight to the top terminal on your um, splitter switch. Then the low goes straight to the low terminal, the bottom terminal on your splitter switch. And this here is your speedometer adapter. If you look under your dash and you follow the speedometer cable where it goes through your firewall, um, on, in the engine bay you'll see this little adapter here right on that cable and there's one wire that comes off of it. And that one just splices in with your low wire so that when you kick it in low your speedometer adjusts and it's correct. And then this here is just your keyed power source, so meaning uh, when you turn your key on, you get power. When you turn it off, there's no, no longer any power. So, and then I just got that run straight to a breaker, a 20 amp breaker I used, and then that goes straight to the power source on the switch. And that is all there is to it. All right, guys, we are outside. And I'm gonna show you on the actual truck exactly how these wires go. Our dog just jumped up on Okay, so. We're going to come down here by the heat two speed. We've got two wires that run off this two speed. So these two wires. And then this here is the speedometer cable. You can follow it right off the speedometer. And um, this is the little adapter right here. This is the single wire. This is in the way. This here you can see is the single wire that runs off that adapter. And all I did was I put an actual connector in here, but I like to change it for extra safety. Um, and I wired that in. So this is my low and this is my high. And it comes out up there. You can see my wiring loom. And it just runs through the firewall. Now I don't have these wires actually run anywhere yet. They're just sitting in here. So then all I did, this is my two speed splitter switch and these are the three wires. <clears throat> so one of those wires that run all the way along the frame go to this switch. The other one that runs all the way along the frame runs to this switch and the other one's your keyed power. And my keyed power I have hooked up to a breaker in here. You can see this is my breaker right here. So it's what I did is this here is normally plugged into the fuse box. I have it unplugged at the moment. But so when I turn the key on, this wire here energizes this whole breaker, which then jumps across and makes this wire hot, which follows all the way to the center of my switch. It's that easy. So we're back in the truck and I'm just buttoning up some of my wires. And um, so you can see here, I'm just taping them to the switch. I'm making sure I run them really well so they don't get ripped off or nothing. So I actually have unhooked them and I'm gonna run them up uh, under the dash so that those are good to go. And I wanted to show you quick what my problem was the last time. So I just had rewired it a couple days ago. And this is what happened. So everything just got fried. <clears throat> so that's why I decided to just go through the whole thing. And I took the motor off the rear end. And I went completely through that. And I put that back on. Ran new wires starting from the motor all the way up the frame. And all the way to the button. I've got it all taped up. And run. i got to fix that down there a little more. But then it runs all the way up. see it till goes to there. So you can see it runs to the breaker. Those two red wires there run through the firewall and plug into the motor. Simple as that. Thanks for watching.